This is. <laughs> This is the profile of the month with Spring Awakening cast member Blake Bashoff with special guest Nodzi. And I'm Steffi D, and I will be um, interviewing Blake Bashoff today for you, Guilty Ones, and all Spring Awakening fans out there. How are you today, Blake? I'm well. I'm nervous, so I have um, Nodzi for security. And company, you know, to keep you company. Okay. Let's do Are this. you ready for your first question? Are you going to talk like that the whole time? <laughs> the whole time. Okay. Okay, question number one. Brooke and Googie, Googie asked, I hope I'm saying this correctly. That's cool. You've had quite a career. What has been your favorite and most challenging part to play? How did you prepare for the role? Um, thank you. And I'd have to say Moritz, uh, just because, like... I'm from film and TV, and this was musical theater, and I was sort of a fish out of water. And because I've played him for so long now, um, it's still a challenge. And um, every night I'm learning and discovering new things. Um, and to prepare for it, it was just sort of a proper rehearsal period of, of choreography and vocals and dramaturgy. And the, um, the production provides you with like all the information you need from the time, from like the philosophers of the time to um, you know, the, the social scene and, and like the style and look, so they equip you well to start the journey. Great. Question number two from Larissa and Ariel. First, you are a stunning performer. Yes, I said stunning. If you were really lost on a deserted island, what are three things you couldn't survive without? Sorry for the corny play on words, she said. Um, coffee coffee a companion would be nice a human companion a human companion okay and chapstick <laughs> and chapstick Look at these smackers smackers luscious lips okay ready for question number 3 Blake hey, let's do it. okay this is a question from Hannah from London England oh, and Ally they ask what do you think of the differences between Moritz in the original Vatican play and in the musical do you wish there were some things that have stayed would have stayed the same? Huh, that's interesting. Um, I think they're both great, but they're both different and shouldn't be sort of intermingled. I think what Stephen Sater did with with our Moritz in the in the musical um, is necessary and serves the story that we're telling every night better than the Moritz in the original. But they're both great, and I would love to actually play the Moritz in the play someday. But I think that they're both should stay on their own and not intermingle the differences, especially towards the end of the of our show. It's different than obviously the original and I think works better for the story we tell. Perfect. Question number four. Anonymous asked. Anonymous, it's so mysterious. I know. Okay. It's just been bothering the snot out of me. I just have to ask. What happened to the slap in the father-son scene? I really think it helped the audience to understand Moritz better. Was it you? Was it getting smacked eight times a week just too much? Uh, no. It wasn't getting slapped eight times a week, which actually is more like 30 sometimes a week because it was three slaps and then a fight call. Oh, but it wasn't yeah. that, although I don't miss my ear ringing from being slapped the wrong way or my jaw being dislocated. But the, the truth is we were rehearsing and it just seemed to uh, live better, the scene with, with us taking out the threat of physical violence and making it more about um, mental humiliation and mental abuse and it just worked better for my Moritz and Henry Stram, our adult man's adult, but we tried different things. We tried grabbing Moritz by the collar and throwing him aside, um, but we figured since the Vandala slap went back in that it was more interesting to explore the idea of just sort of breaking down emotionally and making it more about this than, than violence. Question number five. Sarah Christine asks, Hi Blake. I was just wondering what steps you took getting into the entertainment business because I read that you didn't go to school. Tiffany adds, what are your secrets or tips for actors? Please share. That's right. I moved to LA when I was 18 um, and I started when I was really young. I started when I was 10. So I mean, it sort of snowballed. One thing snowballed after the other. So I don't really have like, you know, there's no formula to how this business, this crazy industry works. But I would say that. Um, my advice is just to be yourself 
and it's a hard industry and it beats you down at times but you'll know if you have that fire in your belly if it's if it's right for you and um, and then just advice is be yourself because what you have what you possess nobody else in the world has and that's what you can offer that's so unique so just like keep your channel and keep yourself open and, and just offer what you have that nobody else has and you should get a notesy right yeah. that's where your secret powers come right from from being so here, talented right in here that's right all right Question number six, anonymous poses. Do you feel a sense of responsibility portraying a character that can and has helped so many troubled teens? Has a fan said or done something that touched you so deeply you'll remember it forever? Well, I mean, nightly, the fans. We have the most amazing fans, I mean, clearly. <laughs> And I, there's a sense of responsibility. I mean, my job is just to tell the story, and I try to, you know, approach more it's from an honest and truthful perspective every single night, and just do that justice. And then um, it is—it's even hard for me to express now in words how grateful and rewarding and profoundly moving and touching it is that I can have an effect on somebody's life, one life, let alone hundreds, by by just doing what I love to do. And it's really special, and I and I thank you. But um, I just do what I do, and. and a lot.